Hi, it's Yari Villanueva, the Taps Bugler. And of course, you can always find me at uh, www.tapsbugler.com or on the Facebook Taps Bugler. And uh, this morning, it's a beautiful Saturday morning in March. Hope everyone is doing well. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button, okay? Trying to get uh, a lot more subscribers uh, for this channel because I'd like to do some more videos about bugling, uh, history of taps, history of bugling, and things like that. Uh, but this morning, it's such, a, it's such a gorgeous morning, I thought I'd take a few minutes and uh, talk about some bugles I received in the mail from my good friends over at BAC Instruments. Uh, this is the company that's in Kansas City, and the owner is Mike Corrigan, who um, has quite a, a bugle collection of his own. He and I have been talking back and forth about bugling, and um, he, uh, now that he has the company in Kansas City, uh, this is the company, uh, of course, that bought up a, a lot of the materials from Canstall in California, and hopefully they are going to continue the great tradition that Canstall started of making trumpets and also of making bugles. And uh, he sent me two bugles uh, to look at, and so I'm gonna show them to you this morning and play them a little bit and give you my feedback on, on them. Now, as many of you know, uh, I sound taps at military funerals. I'm, very, I'm a big advocate of live bugling, and I'm, of course, a big advocate of having uh, people use bugles instead of trumpets because it's you know the more traditional way of sounding bugle calls and of course the horn that i use is a b flat uh, trumpet also known as a bugle of course those terms are interchangeable trumpet and bugle so if i mention trumpet or bugle in this context i'm referring to a valveless brass instrument uh, now, the most common one that you'll find on eBay and find all over uh, are the ones that are based on the M1892 field trumpet uh, in G. Of course, in the 1950s, Vincent Bach made uh, a bugle that was in B flat for use by the United States Army Band uh, for funerals and ceremonies at Arlington National Cemetery. Uh, that, had, that tradition has continued ever since. Uh, this is one of those instruments that they use. This is a Bach uh, B-flat uh, Bach Stradivarius bugle. Uh, this was one of the ones that was made in, uh, I think, 2004, 2005, when they uh, did another order of bugles for them. So uh, they're out there. Canstall has a number of B-flat bugles that are still floating around out there. Um, Carol Bugle is also uh, making some, as many of you know. I've been selling those, and I will have some more this spring to sell. Um, the, the, and they are really wonderful instruments. Um, and uh, if you're interested, you can always contact me through my website or through my Facebook page. But anyway... The B-flat standard bugle, which is based on the uh, model 1892, um, is basically the horn that's used and favored by a lot of buglers across the United States. You know, a nice, good, free-blowing instrument all the way through. Now... Now to get to the BAC, what they've done, um, they are taking requests and they've had a few people who've uh, reached out to them and said, hey, we're interested in having a bugle uh, made for uh, us, but we have uh, certain uh, requirements. Uh, one of the uh, instruments that they're ma making is a trumpet, uh, I believe for a fella in Texas. And so basically what they've done was to take... Uh, trumpet uh, bell and solder it on so this becomes uh, a single twist instrument that's why it looks longer than the other B flat that I have let me hold them up in comparison you'll see that this is the
this top horn is a double twist. So it looks smaller, but it still has the same amount of tubing, okay? Uh, both play in the key of B flat. Now, um, probably without having that, that extra twist, it probably makes for a little bit more of a free blowing instrument. The customer who asked for this instrument, by the way, this is a prototype, so that's why there's a lot of um, soldering marks you can see on this and everything. Um, the, the customer had an idea in that instead of wanting to hold the instrument like most bugles are, held with one hand over the bell and the lead pipe, he wanted to have these rings put in so that you could hold the instrument with one hand, like that, and not have it over the bell. Um, this is an interesting uh, concept. Uh, the idea, of course, that having the instrument over over the bell might uh, contribute to, you know, the lessening of, of, of the sound. So I'll play it both ways, and you can judge for yourself. Um, this is without... Um, holding it through the through the rings sounds a little sharp to my ears. Overall, however, the intonation on the G, the C, the E, and the high G, not too bad, okay? Um, this, uh, the bell is this, a standard trumpet bell. I think it's about four and a half inches uh, diameter, uh, all brass. Okay, so, but that's how it is if I would hold it regularly with the hand over uh, the bell and the lead pipe. Now, putting the, my fingers, hope I get this right. I'm not used to, uh, there we go, like that. Now, what makes this kind of uh, interesting is that um, it, it, it just, it, it, it makes it, to me, my, my opinion, just a little more difficult to hold, okay? And if, it, if you're a really nervous player too, or uh, not one of, you know, not one of those very, uh, you know, less pressure type players, it could be a little difficult. free-blowing sound uh, without that hand over the bell like that. Um, interesting concept. Uh, has a tuning slide um, here at the, at the front. So um, to my ear, uh, I should should have used the tuner. <laughs> it sounds hair sharp. Um, so, um, uh, excuse me, sounds a little flat. The B flat is not quite there. Uh, but that's just my ear. But overall, like I said before, plays v uh, very well in tune. I guess this would fit very well into our standard trumpet case uh, for carrying around. So um, if uh, BAC decides to make these instruments, it's uh, an alternative to the other type of bugle that has the double twist. So once again, you can take a look at how these instruments uh, are configured and put that like that okay and bells side by side yeah okay so um 
but I like it. it. It blows pretty free too, which is which is great. Now the second bugle that they they sent me was um, a smaller B flat, and this is actually a real bugle as opposed to the other instrument because this has more of a conical shape to the bell. Okay, I believe that these um, this bell is one of the leftover instruments uh, from the old guard fife and drum bugles that were manufactured, I believe, by Canstall. Uh, those uh, are, are, are terrific instruments. And of course, uh, the old guard uses a bugle that has a valve in, in it. So this is, this is constructed without any valves to it. So it's just a free blowing uh, double twist bugle, okay? Looks like the British bugle, um, the duty bugle, the so-called duty bugle, um, has a, a large bell, almost five inches in diameter. So it's it's a, it's a big fat bell. And of course, it's gonna have a darker sound. Uh, the B flat trumpet, and you can see the difference here with, with the bells. The, the uh, bottom instrument here, of course, has a more cylindrical bell to it, making it a trumpet, while the top has that conical bell to it, making it more of, of a real bugle. So, um, that's just what it sounds like, and you'll probably hear the difference. So this would sound great to play, uh, to be used on uh, the last post. So if you ever have to, are called on upon to sound that call. That's the short version of it, okay? But as you can hear, it has a much more darker tone to it, um, which actually is the more of a real bugle sound. Uh, the Europeans have got that right, uh, especially the British and the French with their bugles. They use actually real bugles. We're here in the United States, we use more of that trumpet sound, that much more brighter sound. So uh, I don't know if BAC is going to start uh, offering this uh, for the general use. Uh, if they do, that would be wonderful. I know I would buy one uh, to have to use, especially when I'm called upon to sound the last post, uh, like on Anzac Day. Um, both instruments take a standard trumpet mouthpiece, um, and they both uh, they, they both sound well. Uh, although I will tell you, uh, the intonation on this instrument is not as secure as the trumpet. Um, it's just one of one of those things. Bugles always have the tendency where the the fundamental can be sharp. The third, uh, th that third can also be flat, and then the top note can also be very sharp. So when you're playing an instrument, a bugle like this, it's very tough to find an instrument that's going to be perfectly in tune, and you're going to have to adjust and sometimes fight the horn. And you'll find that especially on the um, less expensive uh, instruments, the cheap ones, uh, especially those... Uh, the M1892 Boy Scout type bugles uh, that are being offered. And I'm actually going to do a video about those M1892 bugles that are out there in the market. A lot of people go to uh, websites 
and they see these nice bright shiny instruments and it's uh, like $150, $175 and it's, oh wow, that, what, what a great looking horn. Well, um, it's the old adage, you get what you pay for. Um, a lot of those instruments, the reason they can sell them for a, uh, a lesser price is that the mouthpiece that comes with it are usually of a very lesser quality. I mean, if you want to make an instrument sound good, you know, you, you really need to have a decent mouthpiece, you know, and a Bach mouth, mouthpiece. Those brand new ones will go uh, for around 50, 60, 70 dollars. Okay, so, you know, all of a sudden, you know, if you put a decent mouthpiece on one of those inexpensive horns, the price jumps up. But uh, I'll be doing a video about that. But however, I want to thank you for watching this. Once again, BAC and Mike Corrigan, um, uh, hats off to them uh, because here's a company now that's starting up in Kansas City uh, and they're interested in producing bugles to be used at uh, military funerals. And of course, being uh, a member of TAPS for Veterans, uh, I'm very excited about that because uh, we get calls every single day uh, looking for live buglers to play at ceremonies, whether it be a military funeral or a, um, or a ceremony around Memorial Day. And of course, speaking of which, Memorial Day is, is just right around the corner. We'll be doing the uh, 100 Nights of Taps in Gettysburg. That will start up on Memorial Day and run all the way through the summer. Uh, every evening, a uh, bugler sounding the call at 7 p.m. at the Soldiers Monument in the Gettysburg National Cemetery. Um, that registration is actually going to start on March 14th. So you can go to uh, my Facebook page, the uh, tapsbugler.com, or we have the 100 Nights of Taps Gettysburg has a Facebook page, and you can go there to find out more information. Or tapsforveterans.org another website lots of websites out there but uh, ours are the best of course uh, the taps bugler one uh, you'll find lots of information about bugling uh, so that starts also taps across America um, that was very successful last year with uh, 10,000 participants throughout the country uh, playing the call uh, most of them on trumpets and bugles, but a lot of folks playing on different instruments like flutes and clarinets, trombones, saxophones, and even tuba players and euphonium players, violinists. It was really something. Uh, we're going to repeat that again, um, and more information about that will be coming up real soon. Uh, that's the Taps Across America, and you can go to your Facebook page and look that up also. Uh, and last but not least, a very important thing is that this year is the 100th anniversary of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, the first interment of the unknown that was brought from France over to Arlington National Cemetery on November 11th, 1921. And uh, you'll find a lot of information on Taps Bugler about that as we commemorate not only the history of the tomb, but also the buglers who performed that, that day in 1958 for the uh, internment of the World War II and Korean uh, unknown, and also the 1984 Vietnam uh, unknown that was interred. So those three buglers uh, we're gonna, going to celebrate, as well as all the men and women who have sounded those 24 notes over the past 100 years on the plaza at Arlington National Cemetery. Um, I am one of those few that have been privileged to be able to sound the call on the plaza for a ceremony at the tomb, and I can tell you it's... Um, altogether exhilarating and terrifying all at once, uh, but an incredible honor. So more information about that will be coming up. Uh, that's in November. Uh, meanwhile, um, once again, tapsbugler.com. I'm Yari Villanueva. Uh, please, if you're watching this on, uh, on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, okay? Because uh, I'd love to get my, many more subscribers. And thank you once again uh, to BAC for uh, sending these bugles out for me to try. And I hope uh, that uh, you were able to get some 
uh, good information on this. And if you have any questions, um, if you're watching this on uh, on YouTube, in the bottom there, comments, ask questions. I'm happy to answer any questions, or you can send me a question at my Facebook page. So once again, thanks so much. I appreciate you taking a little bit of your time on this beautiful Saturday morning. And uh, I think I'm going to get out there and go for a nice walk. Take care.